In the 80s, it was fairly common for American-made computers to make their way over to European shores. The IBM PC was fairly successful with businesses, the Commodore 64 was a top contending game platform, and even the somewhat obscure Dragon 32 was essentially a clone of the TRS-80. But the reverse, a British system crossing over the Atlantic to be sold on American shelves, is pretty much non-existent. Let's take a look at the exception. Hey guys, it's Jacob with Tech Retrospective, and today we are looking at this tiny, tiny, tiny Timex Sinclair 1000. Let's get started. While my British fans probably have this story memorized by now, the name of Clive Sinclair is pretty unknown stateside, so it's worth going over it briefly. Sinclair's first company, Sinclair Radionics, founded in 1961, got famous for its sale of cutting-edge hi-fi equipment. Although delays and production problems were frequent, they were dedicated to selling brand new devices in the hi-fi space and making sure you knew about it with big, bold ads. Sinclair Radionics is not just known for their hi-fi though. They were also known for their sleek pocket calculators, their digital watch, which was actually a big failure due to technical issues, and their invention and continued development of the portable television. By the mid 70s, Clive had moved on from radionics to his new company, which was first known as Sinclair Instrument. After a ton of name swapping though, it was known as Sinclair Research. While they would continue their development of consumer electronics, the primary goal of the new company was to enter the fledgling Cambridge-based home micro market. Clive understood that the current method of selling computers, selling kits to hardcore enthusiasts, read that as nerds, wasn't where the money lied. Rather, he should target the average consumer. Paired with that mentality was a goal. A goal to make the cheapest computer possible. Add some echoes on that, please. With this goal in mind, the ZX80 makes sense. For just 80 pounds in kit form, or 100 pounds fully assembled, you could have your own computer. Every decision made about this computer was designed to save money. It's sort of like the Raspberry Pi of its day. The computer, not the dessert. Granted, it did have its drawbacks due to its low cost. The most famous one being its terrible keyboard, or the fact that the screen would blink with every single key press. In 1981, a year after the ZX80 was released, came the ZX81, a revised model with some major improvements, like double the internal ROM, a slow mode, which allowed you to type without the screen blinking, and a snazzy black case. And because the 81 was able to reduce the number of onboard chips by using a custom ULA, it was actually cheaper than the previous year's model, costing 30 pounds less than the older model. Timex, specifically the US-based Timex Corporation, especially well known for its watches, comes into the story at this point. A joint venture between Timex Corporation and Sinclair Research was signed allowing Timex, under the brand name Timex Sinclair, to manufacture and sell Sinclair's machines in the US for the US market. I just had a thought. I I'm just imagining how angry pe British people would be if I called it the ZX80. The collaboration would sell the ZX81 with some changes for the US market as the Timex Sinclair 1000, as well as selling software and accessories like RAM expanders. When the TS-1000 was released in July of 1982, it sold for just $99, which is about $281 in modern prices. It was quickly wrapped up in a large price war between Commodore's VIC-20 and Texas Instruments TI-994A 
with both systems dropping prices into the range that Timex was targeting. This would prove to be a big problem for Timex, as its system's primary selling point was its price. When it's the cheapest computer on the market, it's got some appeal for novelty or as an entry level into computing, but when it's priced at or around the same price as other computers, it just can't compete. Despite nearly being priced out of its own market, loads of third-party devices sprung up as an attempt to minimize the problems associated with the first computer for less than $100. RAM expanders, disk drives, external keyboards, sound devices, and voice synthesizers all appeared within a year of the TS-1000's release. So in short, rather than buying an expensive kit for building your computer, you could buy a cheap little 3.25 MHz Z80 based system with 2 kilobytes of RAM and finish it off with third party components as long as you were okay with running Sinclair Basic. Our system was purchased on Shop Goodwill, still in the box for $31. It came with a power supply, an RF converter, and an RCA cable for connecting to a TV. The left side of the system contains an RCA jack for output to a TV, a headphone jack, a mic slash line in jack, and the 9 volt DC power connector, which you may notice all use the same plug, which means that if you plug your cables in in the wrong order, you will fry your system. On the back is a male edge connector for expansion. Most PCs include a female edge connector with the male end used on the accessories, but this was swapped as a cost cutting measure. The bottom contains a switch for choosing between channel two or channel three for the output TV signal. Now for the ratings. Rarity gets a two out of five. Despite only being on the market for around two years, the Timex Sinclair 1000 sold moderately well, keeping supply healthy to this day. As a bonus, most units tend to be in very good condition since most people use them for like a week and then put them in their closets. Price gets a five out of five. This will absolutely be the cheapest PC in your collection. Aesthetics get a three out of five. Obviously, this is a very cheap looking computer, but it does have a nice color palette and it has that wow factor of being so ridiculously tiny. Software gets a, uh, you know what? Software doesn't even get a grade. You aren't buying this thing for its stellar game library. You're buying it as either an interesting novelty, as we did, or maybe for a serious programming challenge. Lastly, ease of repair gets a one out of five. Why would you? And that's all for you guys today. So make sure to uh, subscribe, you know, all the YouTube -y stuff. Uh, also check out our Discord if you'd like to talk about this or any other retro computer or retro computer related topic with us. I'd love to uh, talk about how pointless and useless this computer is. Um, if you ever used one of these, please let us know what you thought of it down in the comments below where you're actually able to get some use out of it with expansions or did it sit in your closet for 20 years? And I'll see you guys next time.